Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, welcome to our return to in-person meeting. This new format is integrated with members of the public via Zoom. Members of the public who are using Zoom may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and on the agenda. Uh, board members and members of the public, thank you for joining today. Uh, I am Vice Chair Castillo. We have board members Guido Boglioni, Madonna Cruz, Omar Lopez, Carolina Spence, and Caroline Kwan. Our meeting host today is Julie Guzzi, Amy Hennessy, and Shelley McClure. Uh, the hosts will coordinate comments from the public and assist during the meeting and take notes for any follow-up needs. As a reminder to all present, please silence your cell phones. If you are phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the public comment portion of the agenda, for privacy concerns, the host will rename you caller and show only the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Madam Host, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Thank you, Vice Chair Castillo. If you are attending in person, there are cards located at the entrance. Please complete the card and place it in the basket. You will be called up by name when your item number has been discussed and is open to public comment. You will be asked to approach the podium and state your name for the record. After an agenda item has been presented, the chair will ask the board members for their comments or questions, and then immediately following, the item will be open for public comments. If virtual hands are raised on Zoom prior to public comment, the host will lower all hands until public comments item is open to all. Once the chair has called for public comment, those in person may raise their hand and wait to be called to the podium, even if a comment card has been completed. Those on Zoom may then raise their virtual hand, or if you have called in, dial star nine to raise your hand and will be called in the order they appear on the screen. Those joining by phone will be called by the last four digits of their phone number. The host will then determine the order in which the public may comment, whether on Zoom or in person. All public comments will be heard until there are no more hands raised in person or virtually. Each public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear on the screen. Any email comments that were received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the agenda prior to the start of today's meeting. Emails received are not read into the record. With that, I call this June 28th, 2023 meeting of the Board of Community Services to order at 5.05. All right. Madam Host, may we have a roll call? Please respond when I call your name. Chair Pitts. Vice Chair Castillo. Present. Board Member Boccalioni. Present. Board Member Cruz. Here. Board Member Lopez. Here. Board Member Spence. Here. Board Member Kwan. Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of Chair Pitts. Thank you. With that, I'd like to open the floor for public comments on non-agenda items. This is the time when any person may address the board on matters not listed on this agenda, but are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction of the Board of Community Services. Madam Host, do we have any public comments? Yes, I have one public comment from Mr. Dwayne DeWitt, who has approached the podium. Hello, sir. Hello, commissioners. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I come today to thank the parks maintenance staff for the good work they're doing out at Southwest Community Park and what we locals call the Roseland neighborhood. Park staff was there recently making sure to do vegetation management at Roseland neighborhood with the fire season approaching. It was very important. They do a lot there and we're glad for that. I also wanted to make sure and 
or where <coughs> I said the best way to do this might be to see if your newspaper readers still. There are a couple of newspapers here locally. Uh, the Bohemian, Summa County Bohemian, had a recent article for Parks Week, and I hope you might have seen it. They also have the Sonoma County Gazette, and <clears throat> the Gazette was able to interview Eddie Alvarez. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> Marina County has a park called Miwok Park. I hope you've seen it, and if you haven't, you should make a trip down there. It's at Novato, near Novato High School. Excellent place to see how a community came together to have a park that they wanted and also have it be respectful of its history and the ancestry throughout our area. As you know, at some public meetings now, they've been doing what they call the land acknowledgement, where they have somebody read something about, hey, we know this land was first peopled by the indigenous folks and that we wanna make sure and recognize that. And that's a good thing. So in this Parks Week article that was in the Bohemian, they mentioned that at one Mount Tamalpais State Park, they had a forest bathing event. And you know, most folks don't realize that we out in Roseland were exploring that decades ago. And we put together a group called Roseland Action 30 years ago. And we talked about these types of things because in 1984, there was an article in Science Magazine by a man named Roger Ulrich who pointed out that people who had health issues, who had had uh, surgery and saw green outside the windows, healed faster than folks who were just in a room that didn't have those types of window views. So now they call that forest therapy when people go out into the green areas. Some countries like Canada, Scandinavia and countries, they've actually made that a part of healthcare systems park prescription, go outside, do nice things. So <clears throat> this is a great article for you folks to read if you get a chance. It talks about forest bathing from Japan, forest therapy, and how to use trees and forest areas to help people's health. And you know, the indigenous folks knew about that millennium ago. And it's basically been something that we could be honoring with our parks department. So I want to talk with you about how in our area we do a thing called Make a Difference Day. Got a little flyer from 10 years ago when we were out there in the Roseland neighborhood doing it. And it basically is about people in the community helping to make sure that nature is protected and that the kids in the area get a chance to enjoy it. The article that's in the Sonoma County Gazette mentions Eddie Alvarez putting up on his Facebook page some recommendations for our Roseland area. I hope some of you follow that person He's uh, our representative for District 1, which includes Roseland and South Park, the two most disadvantaged communities in the entire Santa Rosa City. In it, in the interview, he mentions not only is he running for office again, but he wants to see Roseland recognized better, and he wants to see the name of that park that we call the Roseland neighborhood be Pomo Park, and that it should be Pomo Park and Preserve. And he's put that out there. So I don't know if that'll be brought forward to you folks in the appropriate manner, but you know, it's really hard to get a park renamed. I've watched that process here before. It's so bureaucratic and it's your staff that name them instead of the community. You should let the community name parks. That would be really a helpful, good thing. So with that in mind, I thank you once again for all the goodness. I have no additional public comments. All right. Well, thank you for that, sir. Those comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, with that, we will move on to item four, which is the approval of minutes. Uh, board members, are there any edits or corrections to the minutes of May 24th, 2023? All right, uh, no hands. Uh, the minutes from May 24th, 2023 are approved as submitted. Uh, next. Uh, Deputy Director Santos, please give your report on upcoming and accomplished events. Thank you, Chair Castillo. Not Chair, Vice Chair Castillo. <laughs> Chair tonight. Uh, not to steal Board Member Spence's thunder, but just wanted to remind everybody our deadline for merit award nominations. Say it again. Uh, it's July 9th, so a little bit more time. 
and in your packet, you have the web link there for submitting nominations. And that's part of our upcoming events. And for Accomplish, uh, I just wanted to highlight our um, in-service training held for Recreations 300 plus temporary summer staff. Um, just as a reminder that we do rely heavily on this influx of mostly teenagers who are coming to help us run our recreation programs and they are greatly appreciated by our staff. And that is the end of my report. All right, thank you, Jen. Uh, we, uh, Vice Chair Castillo, we have one public comment on this item. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, please proceed. Mr. DeWitt, you may approach the podium. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you for that report, Director. Last night at the Roseland University Prep High School, there was a meeting put together by the city's uh, community engagement and the police department. They call themselves now Violence Prevention Partnership, this group that's doing this. And her comments just now about the teens being involved with what goes on with the Parks Department is really important because teenagers really need to have more involvement with the Parks Department, the community engagement. And what was discussed last night was about how you can keep teens preventing them from being in gangs. This came about, the meeting was scheduled before the killing of two 15-year-old boys, one in Roseland, one in Bellevue District. So it was a heartfelt meeting with over 120 people there. You could read about it in the Press Democrat. The thing that I think is most important on all of this is that no one's really reaching out into the community that we see. There's a community team, but they have a list of I guess, of people that they think it's important to talk with. And then they've hired a number of people, Daniel Chaparro, uh, there was Magali Tellis before she went over to the Boys and Girls Club. He might have gone over to the Boys and Girls Club too. But the thing was, you had a community advisory board. I don't know if they interacted well with park staff. The dilemma that we face in Roseland is many people feel that they are excluded from this process that goes on especially people of Latino background and indigenous background. There's this feeling that what's going on is that you have to go along to get along with the people who are at the top levels of whatever bureaucracy, or you won't get invited into any of this stuff. Teenagers need to know, starting when they're about 12 probably, that they have opportunities to be working with the city in these different jobs that go on throughout our bureaucracy especially though at parks and recreation where good things can happen. It's a wonderful program you have when you hire the teens and we thank Ms. Santos for trying to make it even more vibrant. We just know that there needs to be a stronger community engagement effort. And we believe from what we've heard, we haven't been given specifics in our mailbox as out there, that community engagement may be now part of the parks and recreation bureaucracy. We've heard they've changed the name. No longer is it Recreation and Parks, it's Parks and Recreation. That's an interesting change. We're glad to hear about it. But the real news to use would be that we're going to involve the community at the grassroots level, the people at the very bottom, first and foremost, and let them be a part of the good things that this department can do for our teenagers, which to me should start with 12-year-olds looking at it then, 12 on up. It's one of those things. And then let it go to their 21. Let's keep that as prevention. Then we won't have to do intervention. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated for the public comments. Uh, thank you all. And with that, let's move on to reports from the board. Uh, from, yeah. Is there anything else? Did I skip one? Director updates. Number My apologies. Thank you, Jen. Will you kindly provide the director updates at this time? Thank you, Vice Chair Castillo. Uh, uh, just to give an update, I know I've mentioned this before about the department name. Um, the city manager's office, nor is this department um, looking at changing the name of the department. Um, it's been talked about, uh, you know, council. Uh, Assistant City Manager Nutt mentioned it at the budget meeting in May that, you know, parks and rec, parks, whatever it is, but um, 
the official name is still Recreation of Parks at this time. If, if the city chooses to change it, so I just wanted to let you all know that. But we are, um, as part of the budget process, moving forward as a whole department. Uh, Council approved the budget on June 20th, so we'll be moving forward with a new uh, director position out for uh, solicit soon from our HR department, as well as a new assistant parks planner position as part of the budget as well. Uh, last time I mentioned that we'd be looking at um, funding for a new irrigation pond at Bennett Valley Community, uh, or Bennett Valley Golf Course, excuse me, and uh, and looking at funding from a for a landscape contract from the uh, as a part of the budget process. But we've been asked to take those as separate items, so you'll see those in upcoming future agendas at council. Those two requests for funding, uh, but everything else in the budget is moving forward as is. And uh, the VPP group, the Violence Prevention Partnership, uh, part of that is moving over with our department. And we'll bring you back a, a future update about that. Um, I wanted to let you know that we, the parks maintenance team, as well as a variety of field services teams in the city, uh, this is our second round of weed cutting. We're starting again. We started early with weeds. I had to try to knock them down as soon as possible, but we are quickly um, into at least a third of our second, or maybe not that much, of our second round of weed cutting in the city. So if you see a little higher, we're getting to it. We're getting there as fast as we can. Um, this is something that's typically covered on our landscape contract. We have, don't have a landscape contract to cover this right now. We'll be bringing that to council in, in the future time. But right now, it's mostly our park maintenance team trying to get out there and do this along with everything else they do. So much appreciation there. Um, and then I also wanted to mention that um, on July 11th at City Council, we'll be bringing a Parks Make, Make Life Better proclamation uh, on July 11th. And then also we'll be giving a staff briefing about uh, the Park a Month volunteer program. And so staff briefing is, is just, that's very short, but it's an update to the council on how we're doing in our volunteer program. Uh, the other thing I wanted to let you all know is that, uh, and we did receive an email, um, the Hearn Todd project, which includes a fire station, a library, and a future recreation center, and um, possibly other amenities, um, had a meeting yesterday, and there'll be another meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. at Rosen Elementary School, which is 950 Sebastopol Road, uh, and that will... Uh, be in person and you can provide you know, feedback at the meeting. There's also online information on the city's srcity.org website. And additionally, there is tomorrow night from 3 to 6 p.m. a um, interactive kiosk that you can enter survey information on what you think about the Hearn Hub project at Matote Food Park from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be a little kiosk there, and if you don't have time to attend the meeting, you can provide your feedback there. Um, and then um, we'll also have uh, a similar kiosk uh, tomorrow night from 4 to 5 p.m. <coughs> at Roseland Library. Um, again, these are kiosks where if you can't attend the meeting or not sure how to get online um, on the city site, you can go up to the kiosk and provide your feedback on that project that's being run by our capital projects engineering team. And uh, last but not least, least, a small update on Fremont Park. The status was requested on that Fremont Park, so I just wanted to let you know that we're still working on it. Uh, we are still working with our consultant, MIG, on a historical cultural report for the park site, which is, um, they generally finished that, so we need to now meet with them, understand what it means and how to move forward. And so we're looking at potentially returning to the Cultural Heritage Board with information this fall. Uh, pending any stop by our Board of Community Services again for any updates on that project. So it's gone through a round of community engagement already. So um, we'll update you all once we have a better idea of how we're going to move forward with that. But anticipate um, something to be happening in the fall with that. And that is my report. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and with that, now we'll move on to reports from the board. Excuse me, Vice Chair Castillo. We do have one public comment on item six. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. Sorry, guys. If Mr. DeWitt could approach the podium. Thank you kindly. I appreciate these opportunities to be here in person, and I appreciate 
presentation just given by the director. And thank you for correcting me. I had been at those meetings where I heard it would be parks and rec. Now we know it's still wrecked. Anyway, here's the main thing about all this. The information that was just given to us now is typically not known out in the community until this point. And then if the community is not on the internet, they don't get the information if it's not being shared. So one of the things that's really important, 23 years ago, I was on a committee called the Southwest Santa Rosa Redevelopment Project Area Committee. We talked about Southwest Community Park at that time being the site of a community center. We were told, no, you can't do it right now, but people would still like to have a swimming pool there. El Cialan High School is nearby. They don't get the opportunities that the kids at Santa Rosa High School and Montgomery High School get, or Maria Carrillo, to use nice swimming facilities. So I'm here to make sure that you folks recognize you could put in a swimming pool at Southwest Community Park, and that could be a full-size, top-line swimming pool, the best in the community, perhaps, if we did it correctly. There would be support for that. Also, it's great that you're doing these types of meetings. They're in the Bellevue District. Hearn is Bellevue. And one of the things that's happening now with the way the city's done its annexation is it's erasing the history of the past out there. Roseland and Bellevue districts and Wright districts have been around over 100 years, and yet the city of Santa Rosa is making it like, well, it's all Southwest Santa Rosa, and we don't have to worry about nothing else. All those people out there got history. We got lots of POMOs that lived in Roseland, and POMOs out there made a point of saying that, hey, we wanted to be involved in the planning for this area. They've been marginalized. But the thing about it is, the director pointed out that you're getting more people involved in different types of volunteer activities. So please make it a point to reach out to the schools, the elementary schools, Roseland Unified School District, I'll rephrase that, Roseland Public School District is their official name. They've got six schools now. When I was young, there was two, right? So it's grown, even though the district, 1.2 square miles basically, has actually shrunk. Bellevue took some of it. Those kids over there could be focused upon, and it wouldn't be discriminatory to do that. Basically, the kids on the other side of town, they've always been uh, aware and known about these different types of opportunities. If you'll reach out to the youngsters in the Roseland Public School District, starting at the elementary level, they actually call Roseland School now a leadership academy. So let's go there and start with them at five, six, seven years old and get them involved in this volunteering approach and being polite to nature. Thank you kindly. Uh, thank you for that, sir. Uh, Board Member Quant, I believe you have a question. I do. Um, Jen, I plan on going tomorrow night and hearing from as many members of the public as possible. Uh, do we need to report to staff if we're going, uh, or is this outside of potential Brown Act violations? I, I think you're okay. Again, if you do end up seeing uh, more than a quorum, quorum at the, please report it to us so we can follow up with you. But yeah, and if you want to go ahead and report to Shelly, feel free so can, we can kind of track that. Can you remind me of what number that would be? Five. I'm going to be there too. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great. So no problem. Uh, Thank you, everyone. And with that, now uh, we'll move on to reports from the board. All right. Uh, Guido, we can start with you. Uh, do you have any brief updates relevant to recreation and parks or similar updates within the jurisdiction of the board? Uh, I just had some comments regarding Southwest Community Park, which is in my district. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a matter that our director already brought it up that uh, to prove it, getting ready to start getting this grass cut down because it's getting pretty high and the kids and so forth have got to walk through it unless they're really right in the parking lot and a lot of a lot of people who live nearby they just cut across and they've got to walk through all that high grass which i did and i ended up getting a tick on my neck but uh, so i i did present some picture photos that i took and I uh, mentioned the city director and, and she made a report that sounds like somebody's getting in there right away and trying to take care of that. 
Much appreciated. Otherwise, that park is dramatic here. It's beautiful. Nice. Much appreciated. We, we do have the photos taken. Uh, happy to share them as well. That way, take a look. Uh, Board Member Quant, do you have an update? I do. Um, I went to the Doyle Park cleanup two weeks ago. Uh, Chair Pitts was also there and had a lovely time interacting with um, City Council member Stapp and his wife and their nephew who was visiting. And um, yeah, I think I talked Mark Stapp's ear off, but <laughs> that's one of the things that can happen when you do volunteer work and you're city council person. And he was working. He, he was um, really helping out. It was great. Um, also, uh, the Rural Cemetery group was asked to uh, do a booth at Juneteenth. And I think um, we may have been the only official park and rec booth. There were several other cities and Rosa booths, but um, we were able to throw together uh, African American history booth for the Juneteenth presentation, which um, went over really well. Uh, I was also able to attend the show and shine at Juilliard Park, and it is wonderful to see one of our old historic park, parks laid out and covered with uh, classic heavy metal Americana. <laughs> and um, that's about it. Nice, thank you. Oh, oh no, I will say this is a pitch. I take my lead from Carolina Spence. Um, Lamplight. We had a presentation last month from the Rural Cemetery Committee. There are approximately 16 tickets left out of 350 plus. Ooh, nice. Um, I'm the docent of the last tour. You would be on my tour um, 9.30 the night of September 15 and 16. That's a Friday and Saturday night. It is not creepy in the Rural Cemetery. <laughs> and um, it is our big fundraiser. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, Board Member Lopez, any updates? Um, so with the weather starting to become nicer, I've been able to spend more time in parks. Um, I've been going with my friend every Tuesday and Thursday to walk. Uh, right now, we've stuck with Spring Lake, but we're looking to travel to new parks. So that is my big summer pitch to explore our parks. Uh, besides that, no more updates from Nice. Thank you for that. Board Member Cruz? Sure, I have a couple. Um, so on 6-4, the Child in the Wild was happening at Howard Park Spring Lake, so it was really good to have uh, pomo dancers and singers out there uh, on the land. It just felt like home out there. Um, on 6-6, Finley Park, we held Sonoma County Indian Health, we held our uh, Native American graduation ceremony, so a lot of uh, pomo dancing and singing happening there again. Um, on the 16th of Juilliard Park, um, I was asked to come do a land acknowledgement for the start off um, their walk that they do for the Juneteenth from Juilliard Park to Martin Luther King Park. Um, so that was really nice. And uh, July 8th, Sonoma County Indian Health, we are holding our uh, youth big time with the aunties and uncles program at Indian Health. Um, so we're going to have some pomo dancers out there, booths, crafts, food. Um, at Galvin Park. So that's going to be really nice. You guys are all welcome to come 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's free. Um, and uh, yeah, just I'm hearing a lot of Como uh, today in the meeting. And um, I think it was our first in person. I, I asked, how do we name a park Como? And so I really like that uh, being a Como. So, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, board member Spud, city update. Um, I also went to the car show in Juilliard Park, and because uh, those are my kind of cars, <laughs> and uh, um, they it was it was a very cute car show. But the park looked wonderful. I mean, the cars looked really good in that kind of a setting, and it was just a beautiful show. So I felt really proud about the park, and looked around for my. 68 Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very cool. Uh, myself, I don't have much. A uh, new park for me, hopefully I'm saying this right, Nagasawa Park. Yes, I, I went there, poked around a little bit, very cool. Uh, they got a small little trail, took the kids, great park. Nothing, <laughs> no other update besides that, great park. Um, with that, I believe we'll move on to scheduled items. Pardon me, Vice Chair Castillo. Yep. We do have one public comment on item seven. 
Mr. DeWitt, you may approach the podium. Thank you for making the most of my time here today. I wanted to make sure and thank all of you volunteer commissioners and for your reports just now. It was great to hear someone really liked that car show. <laughs> There's another car show on Saturday at Vest Memorial Building being put on by veterans groups. Lots of those good old cars. Again, it's called the All-American Car Show. So you're all invited. Hope you can get out there. It starts in the morning where we'll have Congressman Mike Thompson serving the breakfast along with other local officials. And it's a wonderful time. What I was really glad to hear from all of you, though, is that you're out there seeing the parks, you're doing the good stuff, and you're being proactive on what you find is important for your efforts. I'm hoping that some of you will come to our Make a Difference Day this year, which is in October. It's typically the third Saturday of October, and we'll be coming back with another nice flyer like this in the future. This was made by a team 10 years ago at L.C. Allen High School, who now works in Washington, D.C., after a successful college career at the University of California, Santa Cruz. So those Roseland kids can make nice stuff. And we've been thinking about how the rural cemetery is an excellent model of a public-private partnership, how an area that might not have gotten attention got some volunteers involved, and they were able to pull together a group of people that are separate from government that go in and help in a positive manner. And we believe that could happen over in Roseland. At last night's meeting, one of the things that was happening was the chief of police was pointing out there's not enough money to go around. And they need more money. One of the things that could happen, especially with the violence prevention approach and how it's going to be with your department, is intervention can start by utilizing local members of the community to work with youngsters, pre-teens, and then on up through teens, to be in the nature areas where they can get jobs in the future where they can train. There's actually money available from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to fund job training for teens in disadvantaged areas. The Roseland Census District fills that bill. It's the one at the lowest level for the county of Sonoma. Not Bellevue, Roseland, Sebastopol Road, and down to Burbank Avenue, down to the level of about a bit just before Shepherd School, and that's called the Shepherd census district so they're separate a lot of folks don't realize those nuances but the federal government and funding certainly does and you can get your money by seeking rewards for roseland reaping roseland's rewards is the way to look at it for the parks and rec excuse me the recreation and parks department <laughs> so we'll go with it you guys go with seeking out the dough and we'll make it go thank you kind of Thank you, sir. Much appreciated again for the, the comments. Uh, with that, we're going to go to our first item, art in public places. Uh, arts and cultural manager, manager, Tara Thompson, and arts specialist, Jessica Rasmussen, will introduce the arts and public places program as coordinated through the planning and economic development. Great. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Castillo, and um, hello to all of the board members. My name is Tara Thompson. I'm the city's arts and culture manager in the economic uh, development division. And I'll let Jessica introduce herself. I'm Jessica Rasmussen. I'm the art specialist with the city of Santa Rosa um, for the public art program. And I've been here about nine years, and I'm really excited to present to you all. Great. And I think we get our presentation running. Oh, are we waiting? <laughs> I just uh, checking in with her. It okay. popped up and then it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh cute. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I love that picture. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyway, I just start off by saying um, it's great to be back in a Rectory Parks facility presenting to you all. I started my career here with the city of Santa Rosa working in this building um, as a uh, uh, let's see, what was my title? Art Specialist Assisting the Arts Coordinator. The arts program was housed within the Recreation and Parks Department at that time. So the halls here are very familiar, and I presented to uh, the POCS uh, several times throughout my career. I've worked for the city now for almost 17 years. And here we go. We are up and running. 
So next slide, please. We'll start out with some background. Um, like I just said, uh, being in Ruffin Parks is familiar to us. Um, the public art program and everything that kind of falls under uh, my uh, oversight moved from Rec and Parks to the Planning and Economic Development Department in October of 2018. And so with that shift, um, we have taken that opportunity to align our programming with the tourism destination marketing campaign out there, Santa Rosa, and other placemaking and um, economic development initiatives. So we'll go over the entirety of our program briefly today, just to give you an idea about what we do, what the program consists of, what some of our programs are, um, and uh, happy to answer questions at the end. Um, the program is uh, small but mighty. I am the, I am the only full-time staff uh, dedicated to the public art program. Um, Jessica is full-time, but works for us as a contractor. Um, we also hire several consultants and other contractors to do different parts of our programming. Um, and, uh, and we currently have one intern as well. Uh, our advisory body is the Art and Public Places Committee. We work very closely with them to shape the uh, direction, the annual plan, our strategic plans, um, our budget. Uh, they have a lot of oversight and actually authority to approve public art projects on city property. So they are, uh, rather than having those items be recommended to council, they have the authority for our public art policy to approve artist selection uh, and placement um, of, of our fund, funded projects. Next slide, please. <coughs> um, as I mentioned, the public art policy is a document um, dating back to 1996. Uh, that established essentially what the public art program now has become. It also formed the Art and Public, public Places Committee and um, sets, sets down kind of our um, roadmap and our guidelines for who makes up the Art and Public Places Committee, um, appointment and duties of the committee, um, how projects are developed and the approval process, the public art fund sources and eligible expenditures, our process for accepting gifts and loans of public art, and our process for relocating or deaccessioning items in the public art collection. The last update to the policy was in 2019 um, so that we could change who has the authority over, um, over the program in terms of like signing authority for contracts because it had previously been recreation and parks, so we updated that uh, when we moved to the preference. Next slide, please. Um, as you heard me say, the Public Art Fund is a separate fund for funding the public art. It's what program, it's what it sounds like. Our funding is separate from the city's general fund. So there is a separate fund set up that is dedicated um, to the purpose of supporting public art and cultural programming consistent with the public art policy. It identifies the funding sources and eligible expenditures. And our funding sources are a 1% of general fund construction costs from CIP projects, 1% um, uh, of total park development fees, and then private development. The city of Santa Rosa has an ordinance that establishes that private development um, over a certain uh, budget amount of uh, valuation has to also spend 1% of their budget on public art and they have the option to either place artwork on site on their on their development site or pay that as a fee to the city, which goes into the public art fund. And our eligible expenditures include public art projects, cultural programming, including administrative costs, the maintenance and conservation of the public art collection and fees for consultants. Next slide. Our project development process um, is kind of outlined on this slide. Um, each bullet point kind of has a certain process and um, there's probably some terms that aren't as familiar to all of you. So I'm happy to answer questions um, if there are any, but essentially the, the annual work plan is a document we use to set the goals and the plan for the year, the upcoming year. And we work very closely with the Art and Public Places Committee to develop that, that plan. 
that sets like what types of projects we might be working on if we are starting any new projects, um, what kind of budget we need to set aside for conservation and maintenance that year, if there's um, research projects, anything like that goes into the annual work plan. And then each specific project, so if we're doing a new public art project, we use a document called a project plan. And that's, that's really a roadmap, a step-by-step -step guide for how we will run that project. It identifies um, the goals of the project, who the stakeholders are, the budget, the timeline, what processes we'll be using to um, solicit and select artists. Um, and then we go into, like, when we are doing a project, how do we select an artist? How do we invite artists to participate in our um, projects and um, take advantage of the opportunities? Um, and then what is the selection process for identifying one artist to complete that project? Um, then we have a selection panel, and that is a part of our process to, uh, to select an artist. It is the Art Public Places Committee is involved in this process, but we always create um, a separate selection panel for each project so that we are uh, including a wider range of the community in the selection process for that project. And then there's specific criteria for each project as well. Um, the next step would be once an artist is selected, we enter into an agreement with that artist. Um, we have several formats pre-approved by the city attorney's office to use when hiring an artist. And uh, then, of course, community engagement is a huge part of um, what we do. Um, and there's opportunities for the public to engage uh, with the whole project and the whole project development process along the way, um, including when we're uh, soliciting for artists, when we have final designs, um, and even, even during the annual work planning process. Uh, so I think we'll go on next slide, please, to our recent projects, um, and I'll turn it over to Jessica to talk about some of the ones we have been working on recently. Yeah, so um, right up here, our most recent project was in them, which is in Courthouse Square now. That was um, by Blessing Hancock, and um, it turned out beautifully. That was a really lengthy process, and it turned out great um, before that. In 2022, we have the mural um, Help Each Other Grow, which was by Rough Edge Collective, and that's on the Fifth Street parking garage. Next slide, please. Going back a little bit further, our other recent projects in 2021 was the adoption of the Public Art Program Strategic Plan and also the Musician Relief Grants in 2021. In 2020, we had a ZAG by Michael Hayden installed over the Santa Rosa Creek at Prince Greenway Park, and also Wellspring by Wow House and that same coffee park. Next slide, please. Right now, um, we're working on a lot of different things. We've got the Facade Improvement Program. Um, that's including partnerships with arts nonprofits to provide free murals, mosaics, and other placemaking artwork to small businesses, uh, which were impacted by the pandemic. We're also working on Arts Around. That's a partnership with Creative Sonoma. We're providing grants to local artists to produce temporary public art installations. We have about seven of those. Uh, the arts engagement for Santa Rosa Forward. Okay. Oh, did I have one of the that one? Yeah, so um, one of our big projects this year has been partnering with the Santa Rosa Forward team, which is the, the team in planning, uh, working on the general plan update. And we hired a uh, arts and equity consultant, Kimson Creative, to come in and work uh, with, with the public art program and the Santa Rosa Forward team on engagement, engagement opportunities for youth in equity priority areas within the city, specifically to make sure that we're gathering input from um, voices that don't often get to uh, contribute when doing a major planning project. The general plan update is um, done about every 10-ish years, and it's supposed to look forward for the next 20 to 30 years. So um, it's important that we have the youth voices represented um, specifically. And so there have been three projects that we've been working on with them for our first round of engagements. One um, was, it, it is a coloring book designed by Blanca Molina um, that is specifically targeting uh, kindergarten through, I think, eighth grade age levels, and it essentially asks the types of questions that we would ask an adult, but um, 
you know, geared towards a child. So, like, what's the favorite thing about your neighborhood? What do you need to, um, what do you do on the weekends with your friends? Like, I mean, it's, it's trying to get the same data that is helpful for a general plan update, but through the lens of talking um, to young people. That's one of them. And then the other one, one of the other ones um, has been completed now, but we, there was a kind of installation art um, and collaging workshop done by two local artists with um, Roseland University prep high school students um, and they essentially they shared their hopes and dreams for uh, what the future of Santa Rosa should be and what they need to thrive and stay here and then that got turned into an interactive like puzzle making um, installation in Courthouse Square that took place uh, last month. Uh, and then the last one that's upcoming is actually a music video that's being produced with um, local artist Kayata and she uh, did spoken word workshops with the Black Student Union at the uh, Santa Rosa Junior College, took that input as well as letters written by um, uh, youth at uh, Los Quilicos and um, has put that into a music video and that will be released in the coming weeks. So, um, so anyway, those are some of the kind of unusual, exciting arts related things we're doing with the general plan update this year. Uh, we also have been working with that same Consultant comes in creative on equity training uh, with our Art Public Places Committee and uh, specific specific targeted kind of work plans with uh, task forces of the Art Public Places Committee. Um, so those, it's been great to work with. Uh, like I said, we expand what we're able to do by working with other consultants um, and contractors. And then coming up, even though it's not on this slide, some of the things that we're looking forward to in the next year will be we are working with um, Public Works and the Fire Department to incorporate public art into the new Fire Station 5 being built up in Fountain Grove. And we are doing a project that we're calling a public art audit, which is essentially an inventory of all public art in Santa Rosa, whether or not it was created through any official means or funded by the city of Santa Rosa at all. Um, and so that would be kind of a crowdsourced drop a pin on a map type of um, data gathering. Uh, and then we will be, of course, continuing to implement our new strategic plan, which we're kind of halfway through implementing at this point. So next slide, please. Um, so sort of our ongoing programs that we're, are, we've always got going on um, is our public art collection. Uh, and the conservation and maintenance of that public art collection, um, public art and private development. Our rotating art exhibits are both here at Finley and also at the Person Senior Wing. Those are all year long. We've got our Live at Juilliard concert series in Juilliard Park. That's every summer. Um, special event, film, and street performer permits are always ongoing. And then also we want to talk a little bit about Out There Santa Rosa, which is our kind of tourism marketing campaign. And I'll let Tara talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, so next slide, please. Um, so Out There Santa Rosa is a tourism and destination marketing campaign, kind of a local pride um, campaign that was um, founded, uh, created by the Economic Development Division in 2013. And when the public art program merged with the Economic Development Division in 2018, we took the opportunity to really look at how we can rebrand both the public art program and Out There, Out there San Rosa and really leverage what, what each of us are doing um, in a kind of new, new and cool way. So um, the update that we've recently launched includes a brand new website. I encourage you to check it out, um, which essentially is searchable by neighborhood. So it includes a map designed by an artist. Um, you can click on each section of the map and then you can see um, things in the categories of art, music, eat, drink, active, and wild card in each part of Santa Rosa. Um, and that's again all on the website. And I thought I would just share one screenshot, if we go to the next slide please, of the active category because it does feature a lot of fun things that take place in our parks as well. Um, so that's just an example and the public art program has a page on this website as well. We also have all our standard city uh, website as well. All right, next slide please. 
So all, all throughout, I think we've been mentioning like references to our strategic plan. We went through a really extensive strategic planning process actually during COVID. We had in, in, initiated it in 2019, uh, early 2020, like January 2020. Of course, then everything kind of shut down. But after kind of recovering from that initial shock of being locked down, uh, we decided it was actually the perfect opportunity to dive into um, developing a strategic plan so that really all options are on the table. Nothing was a bad idea. We could really just look at everything and come up with uh, as many new and unusual ways to do things as possible. Uh, so what we ended up with is essentially a three and a half ish year plan. It'll probably be extended just because the rate at which we're able to actually implement it is slower than what uh, we laid out. Um, but we're still chipping away at it. Essentially, the vision that we came up with is a vision for us was what is the world we're working to build. And what we came up with was an empowered, thriving and inclusive Santa Rosa community connected through the power of art. And the mission, meaning what's our unique contribution in making that world a reality, is that we will champion artistic expression and amplify community voices through a diverse array of public art experiences. So um, the full plan uh, and the implementation plan for it is on our website, but I'll briefly just share this slide. I won't read it all, but these were the five goals that uh, the plan kind of distilled all of the input we received um, into. And then under each of these goals, there's several strategies and to tactics. Oh, slide. sorry, next slide, please. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Um, so there's several strategies and tactics under each of these goals that that is what we are now implementing to try to create that, that world that we want to see. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we're, we're happy to answer any questions, of course. The big overview. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of information there and I brought gifts for you and whoever's here in the audience. We have stickers for the Uno sculpture as well as our out there Santa Rosa <laughs> cards with the map on the back. So I'll hand those out. That's really cool. Well, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Tara. Uh, are there any questions for the board? Uh, we'll start with Guida. I have a question. Yeah. What is this? this uh, that sculpture? That sculpture. I've yeah. seen it, but I said, what that I know. Is. I showed you a lot of images in that presentation and didn't tell you who the artist was or where it is. Um, that is called Wholesome by a uh, local Santa Rosa artist, Bobak Imad. And um, he actually now lives part time here and part time in Spain. But he, um, he actually designed that piece specifically. For, uh, for that location, taking into consideration the architecture of the buildings around it. Um, unfortunately, it's on a strange spot there where there's not a lot of public use. Um, so it gets tagged quite frequently. We do have to clean it off quite a bit. And the property is actually owned by the property owner of that building and that lot there. Um, so we've tried to work over the years to get them to upgrade the landscaping and the lighting. And, and that's a challenge. That's one of the challenges of placing public art on non city controlled or city owned property. Um, but we, we do have several pieces in our collection that are like that. Uh, do we have any additional questions? For number one. Thank you, ladies. Uh, refresh my memory, commercial property Commercial development that, um, pays in. Does residential market rate uh, residential pay in? Not, no, not all, in all residential is exempt from our art requirements. So is industrial. Thank you. Um, I was um, interested in projects in the works of Fountain Grove uh, Fire Station, and then you mentioned the inventory. As I recall, the inventory was done several years ago. Is this an update of that? Yeah, it's actually an expansion. So um, what we did several years ago was only city commissioned pieces. This is looking citywide at any public art that has shown up, <laughs> whether it was commissioned by the city of Santa Rosa, or if it's just something that appeared one day, if it's a regular spot that gets um, like a mural put on it done by the community, if it's a recurring festival or a location that people gather, we also are collecting those types of information, that type of information. So it broadens the definition of public art a little bit from your traditional uh, sculptures and murals um, to gathering spaces, performance, type uh, ceremonial 
activities, things like that. We really want to be as inclusive as possible and, and feel like everyone can belong to the arts community here. A uh, follow up on that, will you be using the existing database as the launching platform or starting from scratch? We'll be starting from scratch, but we can integrate it with that. The reason why we're starting from scratch is we're building it through our GIS website. And so we, those two programs, you can't necessarily pre-populate that, but we have that information as well that will be kind of cross-referenced. Great. And yeah. one last question. The um, murals that went in in Roseland, um, did you fund that and were the artists um, paid or was it a materials only funding? The murals that went in in Roseland last summer, I think it was, um, were not city funded. That is a new nonprofit called The Mural Project, um, which was founded by local artists MJ Lindo Lawyer and Joshua Lawyer, who were also the artists of Rough Edge Collective who did the new mural on the parking garage that there's an image of um, that Jessica spoke of. Um, so they received private funding for all of those. Yes, the artists were paid and materials were covered. So um, they, they actually do plan on having that program come back and do a second round of murals uh, this summer. And some of the projects they'll be working on kind of cross over with the things that the city is funding through our facade improvement grant program. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, board member Lopez. Um, I want to start off by saying I did get to work with Kimson Creative, I believe they were called, through Latino service providers. Okay. Um, they were a great group. I had a lot of fun with them. So I would encourage you to keep them around. Oh, we will. <laughs> um, I did have one question for you. What are more or less, what is the turnaround time on a project? So not necessarily counting how long it takes to be put up. Obviously that can differ from a mural to a sculpture, but from being submitted to the art board to being approved, how long is that? It really depends on what kind of project it is. If it's a large scale project like the Unum sculpture in downtown, that's a multi-year process. Um, it, mainly because it's the size and scale, it's how many people need to be included in the process and um, at, at, how, at what points are there like approvals needed. Those are the things that kind of determine generally the length of the project process. Um, so multi-year, and that one was hindered by um, COVID, so it even took longer, right? So yeah, very, very long, long one. But I, I would say in general, if it's a smaller or kind of more typical process, it's it's at least a year. If it's one of the process projects that we are doing a call for artists, like it's a full process process project where we are running the process through the public art program, where we put out a call for artists, we set up the selection panel, we do all the community engagement. Do you know what I mean? It's like that kind of project. Um, there are several other types of projects that we kind of either uh, fund or. Uh, come into contact with in some way, which can be handled very, very differently. So if a community member, we get a lot of requests for community members who actually just want to paint a fence in a park that is on private property, property but it faces a park or in their neighborhood, or um, they, let's see, some of the other ones have been like utility boxes around town or little uh, retaining walls over like an overpass, like over a neighborhood creek, something like that. Those types of requests do come to the Art Public Places Committee because it's on city property or because they got some kind of city grant. Usually it's a community improvement grant from the Community Advisory Board program. Um, and so they do come to the Public Places Committee essentially to say, this is the art I wanna put up, can I get your approval? They're not approving the project, they're just kind of giving their input on the artwork design. Um, those, you know, are quick. I mean, we're not, we don't wanna, yeah, we don't wanna hold up the process, right? It's not our project necessarily. We're just kind of one stop along the way. So we try to make those go as quick as possible. And it really just is a matter of getting on an upcoming committee agenda. Um, then we're really trying to venture now into more of the realm of like, can we do more by doing less? Can we give grants to artists to support projects they're already doing? Can we give grants to nonprofits to support the ongoing work that they're already doing with the community that falls into the arts and culture realm and public art realm? So um, we're starting to look at some of the successes we've had with types of partnerships or like our um, uh, musician relief grants or other types of grants where we're not saying we want you to create this exact thing, just we wanna give you funds to do what you're already doing. So that's kind of the direction we're headed so that projects can happen quicker, that we're not the one deciding what they are, the community can do that on their own, um, and that, yeah, it's, it would be a very different type of project process because 
we're not the ones controlling HPC. Perfect. I think the graph paralysis sounds interesting. I would any other questions? Yeah. Um, so you talked about tourism. Um, does does are you putting anything like about the local native tribes in that? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think that there's. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a current page on the website that specifically talks about that. But that's a really that's something that I would love to be able to partner. Okay, with. I'd love to help you with that. Oh, that's excellent. Um, and then you talked about um, you talked about um, equity training. What what is that, and who's going to be providing it? Yeah, so that was Kim's and Creative. They did they did the, what we specifically asked them to do. So what they um, what they did already was essentially come up, I think it was four workshops with the Art and Public Places Committee, where they organized and brought in um, guest speakers to specifically talk about what does equity mean, especially through the framework of a public art program or an arts organization, um, and who, who your community is, who you're working with, um, who you're supporting, how you uh, in, invite and um, have people belong to the processes that you're creating, uh, and um, and really shared uh, tools. It was it was mostly geared towards tools that the committee could um, start using related to uh, uh, what is the term CP VR um, community? No. <laughs> Oh gosh, it, it, participatory, it's essentially participatory based um, decision making. So essentially, I can't, I, I will think of it, but in this exact moment, I can't come up with the exact uh, term. But essentially, it's where you are co designing a process and a, and a, um, a desired outcome with the community that's going to receive the outcome, right? So instead of saying, Hi, we want your opinion on which art piece you want, this one or this one. You, you start very early and you say, what kind of art means something to this community? How could it be created with you instead of for you? So it's essentially that that was one of the tools that helped, uh, that the that Kim's and Creative helped to describe as a tool to put in our toolbox for running the program slightly differently. We also talked a little bit about um, developing policies around cultural appropriation when it comes to public art. Um, so there's a lot of recommendations from the workshops that they did that will um, find their way back to the committee in the form of recommendations from the task forces that are now formed. To work Great, thank you topics. so much. You spoke uh, in your uh, presentation, cultural was said a lot. Um, to me, I, as a Native American person, culture means something different, probably what it means to you. What, what does that mean to you, you say that here today? Yeah, I think that arts and culture, when we talk about it in terms of um, our program and the, the meaning that we have kind of um, uh, put upon it, really has to do with what is included when you talk about the arts community. Because I think that we, we strive to have as inclusive of a definition of public art as possible so that um, all forms of art and all practitioner, practitioners of art are included in that. So instead of, like I said earlier, instead of just considering public art, a mural or a sculpture that's in a public place, we're talking about performance art, um, any type of performance, music, dance, ceremony, um, basket weaving, you know, we want people who may not consider themselves an artist to feel like they're a part of the arts and culture community of Santa Rosa. So that's really what we mean. Um, but I would love to continue to develop how we can uh, expand that meaning so that it is um, um, even more so uh, conclusive and specific to the, the cultures that are here in San Rosa. Thank you. Another question, your arts committee, are there any local Native Americans on that committee? Not currently, but we're really trying to get um, a, a new appointee made by one of the council members whose appointee um, can't serve on the committee anymore. So there's there's nomination that has been submitted and we're, we're waiting for that appointment to take place. Okay, uh, one more question. Um, is, is outreach being done from your department to local tribal nations? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? 
No, but thank you for your report. It was wonderful, very detailed, and that was great. The information was valuable. Yes, thank you. It's a great report. I have uh, one quick question regarding funding sources. Uh, does the public art fund also accept private donations? Can you just directly yeah, write a I'll check to the fund? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and is there any sort of like uh, link or something like that? Is there an easy way to donate? No, no. I, okay. wish, I wish we had an easy way. Um, okay. Cash out. The situation is never presented. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Got it. The last time that we had that come up in kind of an official capacity was through two rotary clubs that wanted to contribute towards the public art that went in at Coffee Park um, okay. through the rebuild of the park. Um, it doesn't happen very often. There have been fundraisers in the past where like we did an art auction one year. This was in the very early days of my uh, my work here. Um, and then we have had private donations just show up like in the mail and check and we, we cash them, you know what I mean? But there is no like easy link like donate here. Um, okay. So that's not something that currently exists. Well, if at all possible, I would, you know, just look into that. I'd be happy to, it's a small sum, obviously, but <laughs> the public art fund, I think a lot of people in the general public would as well. So maybe that's a potential source of, of revenue there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, other than that, Madam Host, do we have any public comments on uh, item 1.8? Um, let me check. Mr. DeWitt, I have two cards for you for item 8.2. Did you wish to speak on this item? Yes, I apologize that I've <clears throat> taken up so much time today, but you learn so much new information when you come to the meeting in person and get to hear of all the good stuff. Thank you kindly. My name is Dwayne Dewitt. I'm from Roseland. In the past, public art there was done by local folks just doing it. No one ever solicited them. They just went out and painted Roseland Creek along the bridge over the creek at Burbank Avenue and McMinn Avenue things like that. Now that you've shared this great information today, perhaps we'll be able to get them more involved in how they can get more grants to do more uh, fine things over there in Rosa with this art. And then there's the Rotary Clubs there. There's one for West Santa Rosa. And I believe that uh, reaching out to Rotary Clubs and to business organizations to help with the art, the mural that was painted on the building that was Roseland Hardware done by the mural project people. That was on their dime and their time. That'll be destroyed when the city and the county work together to do their big development at the destroyed Rose Bowl site. So um, now that I've heard this information, we'll approach these people again to see how they can get some positive things going. You probably didn't know that there's an actual Native American museum at Roseland Elementary School in a modular building that we've been trying to get opened up again, maybe get moved to a different campus, however that works. That would be a great site for murals on the sides of those types of modular buildings for the youth to see these things that you've been talking about. All in all, this was a wonderful presentation. I'm so glad that you did it. And my high school's having a reunion soon, and they never thought Santa Rosa was hip, cool, and weird. As a matter of fact, <laughs> when we were young, the city of Santa Rosa paid money to come up with a slogan called the city designed for living. And so many young people at the time felt Santa Rosa was so boring, they called it the city designed for leaving. And most young people left Santa Rosa to go to college, get jobs elsewhere, and just do stuff. Santa Rosa has now become a mecca of retirement people moving in and all kinds of stuff. It's grown from that size of, wow, it was like 30,000 people when I was a kid. Now we're closing in on 200,000 people. So it'll be interesting. I'm gonna tell all kinds of people about this out there, hip, cool, and weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be looking for this stuff. It's gonna be fun. Thank you again for your time. I can't stay for more, but I wanted to mention a couple of other things. It's really important this naming and this process, we were told in the past, this is just an advisory body and everything that's done here doesn't really account for much. And I thought, wait a minute, this needs to be a commission with decision-making power so that public policy does involve what the arts people are doing, what the different folks are doing. I can't speak on the next item, but 
Thank you for hearing that. All right. Thank you, sir. M much appreciated again. Uh, with that, any more questions from the board? Any additional comments? All right, and I think we're good. Next, on to item 8.2, uh, annual appointment of the Santa Rosa Waterways Advisory Committee representative. Um, at this time, the board will nominate, discuss, and vote to elect a member of the Board of Community Services to serve as representative of the Santa Rosa Waterway, Waterways Advisory Committee. Um, and the proposed recommended action is that the board shall, by motion, elect a representative for a term of one year. Um, before opening it up to questions and nominations, it's my understanding that uh, board member Carol Kwan has served on this subcommittee for some time. And I just want to say thank you for that. That is awesome. And thank you for the dedication to the subcommittee. Uh, with that, any additional questions, comments on the board regarding the committee? Yes, please. Uh, I'll just say I would like to stay on the committee. And if anyone else is interested, I would be happy to either tell you my experiences or defer to staff to flesh out what happens on the Waterways Committee. We appreciate that. Any questions? I would like to nominate her to continue. Wonderful. Do we have a second? Nomination? I'll second that. All right. Uh, let's take a vote then. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Let the record show it's official. That's an official appointment. Um, Madam Host, do we have any public comments on 8.2? I believe our public comment has withdrawn his wish to speak. All right. Then with that, any further comments from the board? No. Nope. All right. Then next, uh, next item, 8.3, Board of Community Services Ordinance Subcommittee update. Uh, Deputy Director uh, of Parks, Jeff Santos, will discuss the reinstatement of the BOCS Ordinance Subcommittee, and we also address the board name. Uh, the, recommendation, the recommendation action is that the board shall, by motion, address any changes to be recommended to the council. Thank you, Vice Chair Castillo. Members of the board, I, we want to bring back a board item. It's a bit of a housekeeping item, so hopefully it'll be really brief this evening. Next slide, please. Just a reminder, we were here last month and we were talking about the ordinance related to the governance of our board. And we talked about the meeting start time. We talked about the addition of a youth member and we talked about the type of advisory body and we also talked about the name of the advisory body. So just a little reminder, we were here last month and that's what we talked about. Um, on the advisory body name, I wanted to point out that um, the original intent of the subcommittee uh, that was formed was to align the name of the Board of Community Services with the name of the Recreation Parks or Park Recreation, Recreation Department. Um, we have we know now that the city is not um, officially changing the name of our department and we did note at the may 23rd meeting that the board did actually change the name to recreate to recreation and parks board uh, and so we wanted to call that out to attention and uh, what we're going to be asking tonight is that you rescind that motion and actually vote to rename yourselves to the recreation and parks board next slide please the other task uh, I want to talk about tonight is uh, reforming or um, renewing the board subcommittee on board, uh, for the Board of Community Services. Uh, originally, we created, created it last year in October, uh, and that was for the purposes of reviewing discussion options and really working with staff to try to look at how to update the board ordinances to better reflect what we do. Uh, when we got to a point where we thought we were good, we did pause the subcommittee. We didn't eliminate the subcommittee. We put a pause on it uh, earlier this year. And we have since uh, worked with um, the city manager's office, done a little bit more work on looking at what is possible. And we recognize there's a little bit more work to do. So we're recommending to reestablish that same um, subcommittee. Um, 
going forward so we can do a little bit more work. Next slide, please. And so what we're looking at with that work is to review our ordinances related to powers of duties and uh, review the option to include diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging into the language of the bylaws, which would be um, something new for any board uh, on this, at the city. So I think it'd be a really good uh, addition to the subcommittee since we already need to take another quick look at our powers and duties and um, clarify some of the language that we came up with in there. Uh, just a reminder that this, if we, you know, reforming the subcommittee, the, the subcommittee does report back to the entire board. The subcommittee doesn't make any decisions. They report back to the entire board and the entire board makes a decision on that. Um, then whatever decision we make on that, you know, going forward in the future, all of those things will again go through city attorney review and uh, uh, city manager's approval prior to us going to council to update our ordinances and bylaws. Next slide, please. So um, I'll go through these each at a time and then I'll turn it back over to the chair to run through things for you all. Um, so just to recap, we are number one, recommending to discuss and make a motion to rescind the former recommendation to change the name of the Board of Community Services to the Parks and Recreation Board. Second, we'll be asking for you to recommend voting and aligning the name of the Board of Community Services with the Recreation and Parks Board. Um, to align with the Department of Recreation and Parks. And lastly, we'll be asking to uh, the board to reestablish the, sub, the governing documents subcommittee. And uh, what's not listed on there is also um, looking to um, a nomination to appoint um, a new member in replace of board member uh, Griffin, who formerly left the, retired from the board. So we right now on the board, we have chair Pitts and board member Quant. So we need to uh, nominate one more person as part of that third recommendation going forward. So next slide with that, I'll take any questions. Again, this is just more of a housekeeping thing to let's reestablish the committee and um, let's look at uh, rescinding and revising what we said last time for to realign the name. Uh, board member Quant, I believe you have a question. I do, um, as an interested party. Um, you talked about the Rec and Park Board possibly being the first board to talk about, was it cultural diversity? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, geez, I'm having a, a, a brain face, but essentially we're looking at um, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, DEIB, as a, as a short. A daunting and important task. Will yes. Um, staff other than park and rec staff be helping us with that journey? Um, not necessarily. If we if we need to explore that, certainly the subcommittee, we can look at that. And uh, it's, it's uh, not to get too far into the weeds today, but it's probably more likely to end up in our bylaws. Ordin the ordinances are really set and dry, they're cut and dry, whereas our um, our bylaws are more how we operate and how we uh, conduct ourselves. So I think that would be the best place for those. If there's room for that, we want to look at that. And uh, follow up question. I know uh, for the first phase, we met three or four times. Right. Was it once a month? Could, could you? Um, uh, flesh out. Sure, yeah, it, it is a commitment. So um, when we're looking at replacing board member Griffin, it is going to be a commitment. We're hoping to get this done quickly in the next potential month or so. It's, I'm expecting two or three more meetings at the maximum. Um, hopefully we can, we got a lot of work done in the subcommittee um, last time. So I think we can do the same uh, pretty quickly, actually, because the intent is, of course, to get back to council to update our ordinance so that we are looking at a four person quorum instead of a five person quorum uh, because we have a, a, a we need to update in the ordinances. So we want to get it all correct when we do go to council. So there is a commitment, but I'm hoping it can be um, done as early as possible this summer. And, and just as a side, um, I will say, as probably the only person who wasn't involved in government at the meeting, Terry Griffin, I can't say enough because she came out of city council. She was the city clerk. She was city clerk. Her knowledge base was amazing. Emily Ander. 
Yes. Definitely did her homework. Uh, Logan Pitts, um, who works at uh, the state level, also has a tremendous, um, it is daunting because it is technical, but there's a lot of support and it's okay to say, I don't understand. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Jen. Uh, any additional comments, questions from the board? No. Nope. All right. Uh, then with that, we're going to try to move forward with some of these items. Now, I'm going to do my best not to mess this up, guys. All right. So bear with me. So the first item uh, is if someone, anyone, could make a motion to rescind the former recommendation to change the name of Board of Community Services to Parks and Rec Board. So do I want to make a motion to switch the name back? <laughs> Thank you. Anyone second? I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let the record show. Uh, officially, the motion to rescind passes. All right. So next, we're going to... Uh, seek a recommendation to vote to align the Board of Community Services name with the Recreation and Parks Development Department name to the Recreation and Parks Board. Ms. Madonna, I'm going to make a motion that we switch it back. Anyone second? second. There Thank we you. go. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let the record show. Uh, Unanimous, everyone's in favor, so it'll now be the Recreation and Parks Board. All right, I think we got that right. Super efficient. <laughs> All right. Uh, Deputy Director Santos, anything needed there? Anything further? We're good. You can move on the free. All right, great job, guys. Uh, third is going to be recommending reestablishing the Board of Community Services Governing Document Subcommittee. Uh, anyone would like to make a motion? Do you have to be on the park and rec board to be on that subcommittee? Yes, it's a subcommittee of this board. I was going to invite Terry down. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone on the board like to join us? I make a motion. I have my neighbor here <laughs> on the subcommittee. Quick. <laughs> I would second that nomination. Uh, wonderful. So first, let's have a vote to reestablish oh. the governing documents. I'll motion to, to reestablish. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we are officially reestablished. Uh, now, would anyone like to make a nomination for the subcommittee? I nominated my neighbor right. here. Yeah, I will second, second if that's needed. All right. Uh, let the record show uh, board member Omar Lopez has been nominated. Uh, Board Member Lopez, do you accept the nomination? I will happily accept the nomination. All right, wonderful. All right. Yay. Thank you. And I'll, I'll get in touch with the subcommittee to, uh, most likely Emily Andrew will get in touch to, to start the subcommittee again and look for time. So thank you. Sorry to intrude, but if we could have an official vote on Mr. Uh, board Member Lopez um, oh. becoming the new member of the subcommittee, oh. please. Yes. We had a, a motion and a second, and we need a vote. Do I vote on this? Yes. Okay. Uh, so all in favor, right? All in favor? All in favor? All right. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. <laughs> uh, Good job. Yeah, great work, guys. Got that clean up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Madam Host, do we have any public comments on item 8.3? I have no public comments. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Next on the, uh, on the agenda is item number nine, committee reports. Uh, is there an update from the mayor's lunch? I don't believe so. Yeah. Logan, right? I, yeah, I didn't hear anything from Logan specifically about this, so I'm not sure. All right. Uh, Board Member Quant, would you please provide us an update for the Waterways Committee report? I will. Um, we had a presentation last week. Uh, as an aside, that committee usually meets the day after this, but because Thursday was the first day of the month, it threw everything cattywampus. <laughs> so June's meeting has already taken place. 
and the second of two industrial parcels out the old airfield um, were reviewed um, in great detail. And um, we do have two new members of the committee, so some interesting and new perspectives are being seen and we're hoping for a field trip out to uh, the newest part of the Colvin Creek Reach, um, hopefully this summer. And that committee meets the third Thursday of every month at 9 a.m. in the building whose name I don't know that used to be Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> we still call it the Chamber Building. Yeah, it's the Chamber same. Building. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Uh, Deputy Director Santos, do we have any written or electronic communications? We have not received any written or electronic communications. All right, thank you, Jen. Sure. 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 Yes, I know. I'm like, I hope she doesn't think I'm staring at her because I'm watching the dog. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, moving on to item 11, uh, are there any items uh, that we'd like to see on future Board of Community Services agenda? I had 1.5. Uh, I know we're going to talk about, uh, was it the maintenance contract? Was that what it was called? The landscape maintenance well, landscape contract. Landscape maintenance yeah. contract. Um, I definitely want to hear on that, but specifically, can we talk about the use of herbicide and other weed repellents in that contract? I will I will follow up with the city manager's office. We're taking that as a citywide thing to the city council. So I'll talk to them about um, also stopping by the store and I'll talk okay. about that. Perfect. And then the other thing, I don't know, I might, this may have happened before I joined the board, um, but is it possible to get something of like a five-year financial goal for the parks and rec, what we hope to see within the next five years or so? I say five arbitrarily, whatever number we find to be adequate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I will do my best to give, a, we'll do our best to come back with that right now. Uh, we're just been reformed together. We still do not have a director. So uh, we have our goals. Um, we have capitals out, out to five. When we did our capital project, we looked at that. So we can, we can definitely bring back something that's a little more unified, they'll probably be in little sections though, for sure. Okay. Um, one for me, uh, looking at the next meeting date, I will be out of state, um, so I will not be here. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone else, future agenda items? All right, uh, then with that, uh, our next regularly scheduled meeting of this board will be held on Wednesday, July 26th at 5 p.m. Uh, and with that, I adjourn this, this meeting of the Board of Community Services at 6.29 p.m. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.